Let's give God some praise and glory. Father, we thank you and bless you for tonight. We pray that your word would speak to us, God, with power and authority. That your word would accomplish that which is set forth to do tonight. We pray that every heart would be stirred tonight. That you would have your way in this service. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, someone say amen. Give your neighbor a high five as you're taking your seat. Tell your neighbor God is in this place. It's good to see everybody tonight. Give it up for our online community watching around the world. We can say that now officially. They're around the world. People are watching. Praise the Lord. We started a series on forgiveness and inner healing. How many of you have enjoyed that series so far? We're going to continue that series tonight. Be reading from the book of Exodus chapter 2. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 2. How many still carry Bibles? Anybody? All right. Throwback. Amen. If you're in this room and you've ever experienced abandonment, you're going to want to pay attention tonight. If you ever experienced abandonment from a parent or a loved one or from a boyfriend or girlfriend, a father or mother, you're going to want to listen tonight. Um, God wants to do some operating tonight, bring about some healing in your life. How many of you need that tonight from the Lord? I'll take some. In Exodus chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1, it says this, About this time, tell your neighbor it's about time. A man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. And the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And she saw that he was a special baby. All moms think their babies are special. This one was really special. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. The Pharaoh was trying to kill all the Hebrew children, so she had to hide her son. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch, sort of a, a mini little Noah's Ark there she made for him. And she put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to her brother and soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the river bank. And when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. And when the princess opened it, she saw the baby. And the little boy was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess and said, Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? And she said, Yes, go do that. The princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. And she said, Take this baby and nurse him for me. And the princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. And so the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Wow, she got, she got paid for breastfeeding her own baby. That's a pretty good deal right there. That's some favor of the Lord going on right there. And later when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter who adopted him as her own son. And the princess named him Moses for she explained that I lifted him out of the water. I got to believe some people in here have also been lifted out of the water. Do you have any Moses in the building tonight? During this time of persecution of God's people, they were living in Egypt. And, Egypt, and in Egypt, God's people were expanding. They were growing. They were outnumbering the Egyptians. And the Egyptians were terrified of God's people growing and taking over Egypt. 
How many know that you can grow even in an evil place? You can grow in the middle of a dark place with God's spirit there with you. It will cause you to grow in places where you should not otherwise be growing. God can put you anywhere in any location. It don't matter how many devils are there. He will cause you to grow and expand and take over those territories. How many know that you serve a God who can do that? Moses' mother abandoned him in the Nile River at only three months old. And some of you mothers may be asking, well, how could she do that? Well, had she never let him go, he would have died at the hand of Pharaoh. And had he, she never let him go, he never could return to free her. And so she sent her son in, and he would ultimately return to take his mama out. And sometimes you have to go in it if you're going to lead other people out of it. Sometimes you have to get in it. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to get a, go to places that are maybe inconvenient and uncomfortable. And you have to go there so that you can lead people out. I have to believe that I was once in prison, but now I lead prisoners out. I, once suff I was once suffering, but now I lead people who are suffering out. And maybe you were once depressed, but you ain't depressed no more. God brought you out, and he's going to use you to lead other depressed people out of bondage. You were once addicted, but God led you what? Out. So sometimes you got to go in it if you're going to get out of it. Tell somebody, I'm in it right now, Pastor. I'm in it. Sometimes I remember I had to, I had to once live with the enemy so that I could learn how to defeat the enemy. I learned strategy. I know how the demonic world operates because I once lived there. Some of you should be experts at the demonic realm, the amount of demons they used to hang out with. You have inside information. And so she put her baby in the, into the Nile River, and the baby survived the Nile River. The Nile River is no joke. It is, is the longest river in the world. It's full of danger. Witches and warlocks go there to, uh, for the graduation ceremony. They swim in the Nile because of the demonic presence there. Nobody's swimming in the Nile, but the baby was untouched. The baby was safe even among the crocodiles and the snakes. God protected him because God had a plan for his life. And I have to believe that in this place, although you've lived in places where the devil should have taken you out, God kept you safe in those places so that he could show his power through you. He has a plan for your life. Even if your life has been filled with darkness, God has a plan for your life. He's going to take you out of darkness so you can help bring others out of darkness. How many are ready to serve the Lord in that way? God protected him because God had a plan for his life. All the years that you were lost and in the world, you should have died a long time ago. God protected you for this time so that you could be a servant, so that you could be a minister, so that you could be on fire for him, that you can go into the streets of San Bernardino and L.A. and Arizona and, and Uganda so that you can go in there and bring other people out of darkness. God has a plan for you. Just like for Moses, Moses is put into the Nile and he survives under God's protection and then he, he, he floats into the, into the arms or to the path of the princess of Egypt. How I many know God will bring you before kings? 
God will change your status in a minute. He'll bring you before people who have the authority to change your status in a minute. And he went from being an orphan instantly to being the prince of Egypt. A while a prince, what did he do? He murders a fellow Egyptian. And Moses then, what's he do? He, he flees to the wilderness or he runs to the wilderness. And that's where God introduced himself when he was on the run. So now he's abandoned and he's also a murderer and he's also on the run. What a good candidate for God. God will take people at their worst condition that you can possibly imagine and introduce himself to you and change your life forever. How many here who, who, who have experienced the power of God that's changed your life? Give God a shout of praise in this house. And he meets God in the fiery bush. And God introduces himself to him. And he says, Moses, I am your God. Pharaoh's not your God. Osiris is not your God. Egypt is not your God. I'm your God. I protected you all these years. I've been with you all these years. I've been working behind the scenes for this moment that I could introduce myself to you. Of all the tragedy you've experienced, all the hurt that you've experienced, all the abandonment that you experienced, and now you are with God. And God begins to make sense of all the nonsense. He begins to explain why he went through what he went through. He begins to understand that God was going to turn his mess into a ministry. And Moses is completely shocked. But he understands why he went through what he went through. And when you meet God, he brings revelation to all the hurt the rejection, the abandonment, the pain, the suffering, everything that you had to experience. When you be God, boom, a light goes on. And revelation comes. And now you've experienced what it's like to be lost. And now you experience what it's like to be found. You know what it's like to be addicted. And now you know what it's like to be free. You know what it's like to be depressed. And now you know what it's like to be full of joy. And God bring it to light. He bring it to light. What do he do? You bring it to light, and now you understand. And because you understand, you can forgive. The understanding brings forgiveness. And what did God do? God reunites Moses with his family. That's what he does. That's what God's, always God's intention is reunification. He's a God of reconciliation. He's a God of reconciliation. And so, of course, he wants him to be reunited with his family. And so Moses gets reunited with his entire family. And his brother Aaron, his sister Miriam, become his ministry partners. They begin to do ministry together. They begin to serve God together. They begin to find the will of the Lord. They begin to do great attributes for God and everything is, makes sense. Amen? And God uses broken things. He uses people that are torn, people that are broken, people that are hurting. God will use broken things to bring his glory. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? If your life is broken tonight, uh, be of good cheer. Because God knows how to work with your brokenness. God knows how to bring comfort where there is no comfort. Meaning to something that's meaningless. 
What you don't understand, God will make sense of it all. And you'll understand what, why you went through what you went through. And so Moses is reunited with his family. And they get together. And what do they do? Well, they deliver an entire nation. What an assignment. They're going to deliver an entire nation. Millions of people will fall under their leadership and be led out of Egypt into the promised land of God. And I say all this to, just to tell you this, that none of this could ever have happened without forgiveness. None of it. Moses had to be forgiven of what? Murder. Any murderers in the building? Don't put your hand up. <laughs> you know, scare people. <laughs> Moses had to uh, forgive his mother for abandoning him. There was forgiveness had to take place through the entire family. If one person did not forgive, the plan would not work. It took a series of forgiveness through multiple people. And I share this story because we actually have a test, a live testimony tonight. We like to hear from the word of God, but how many know there's some living epistles around here? How many's life is being written by God right now? Like I got a story too. And so we got a great family here. Give it up for Charmise. Bella, Justin Jr., Justin, Robin, and Marcus. Let's all stand to your feet. Come on, give, give them a good clap offering here. Now you guys st stand up and we'll sit down. How about that? Oh, this is a nice cause. It's way better than my lumpy one at home. This is a good one. Now, Justin and Charmise, I met them probably about a year and a half ago, maybe something like that. And when I, when I met Justin and Charmise, um, they had been assigned to me uh, for counseling, I believe it was. I don't know why I always get the hard ones. But when I saw Justin, I, I met Charmise and go, oh boy, these guys, these are some tough ones here. And, and so we began to talk and, and when I met them, uh, they were in the men's home or, or in the men and women's home. Justin obviously was in the men's home, you're in the women's home. And, and, and you didn't have the children, right? You didn't have the children with you. And so what I want to ask first is, uh, why did you have to give up your children? So we had to give up our children because um, we were just, we were being neglectful to our children. Um, Justin and I were both using at the time. There was a lot of um, domestic violence and um, just neglect, honestly, and um, which caused us to get a CFS case and it had someone step in to protect our children because we weren't. So you had to give up your children to CPS? Yes. Just how did that, I mean, I'm a dad. How, how did that feel to, to have your children taken away by, you know, people that are ultimately strangers? Well, for me, it was, it was bad. Um, our marriage uh, was in a really dark place. Um, and this was not the first time that our kids had to be removed by CFS. So, um, you know, you could imagine that, you know, the first time, it was bad. I was like, man, but then the second time it happened, I'm like, wow, like it happened again, you know? So um, not only uh, was I overrun with, you know, like, like feelings of guilt and shame and, um, you know, how did I let my life get this bad all over again? How, um, you know, could I let my marriage get like this? Um, I was also faced with, you know, uh, like these people telling me that we would never get our children back, you know? So, and on top of that, I was in jail, you know, when they actually removed uh, our kids. I was, I was locked up, you know, um, you know, just finishing up another run, um, ended up in jail. Uh, so 
for me, it felt really bad. I felt hopeless. Um, like I said, guilt, um, shame, uh, you know, to say the least. And what I love about your story, and I know it's, it's tragic, but Marcus and Robert, or Marcus, you are Charmisa's cousin, right? Correct. And fortunate for you guys, for this family here, because I, I think of you like almost like the Pharaoh's daughter, right? Except you're a man, of course, but <laughs> Robin, you're a woman. But she was there so that she could be kind of a mediator, a support system. Um, she took him in. She adopted, kept him as almost like her own son. And, I mean, that was good that you guys were there to do that for them. So, and today you guys are doing it again, right? Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a new family of five. They do. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's been a blessing. It's a true blessing just to be able to, Amen. to, to have that, to have that, um, thank you, to have that, um, that responsibility uh, placed on us is just tr it's something special because we, we love each and every one of them yeah. like our own. Robin, how did you feel about bringing children into your home? Mm -hmm. um, a blessing because I've known Charmise for what 12 years so and it, they just showed me what it was like for me to have my own kids I have um, stepkids but I don't have my own kids so with them coming and then with the baby coming it just showed me what it was like to really have my own baby that's awesome isn't that awesome yeah. and so you guys are in the homes and you're separated right and you're married, and you have to take all these steps to get your children back. What sort of steps did you have to take while, while you were in the home, Justin? Um, well, like I said, they were telling me that I would never get my kids back um, just due to it being the second time that they had to be removed, and it was the, um, they, they removed them for the same thing, um, domestic violence. Uh, so I had a lawyer, and he told me, like, man, like, it's looking bad, but if you want your kids back, you need to do everything that they were telling you to do if they were giving you your kids back. And I'm like, man, okay, so I've been here before. I already know what to do. Um, so I just enrolled into all of these classes on my own. I had to take um, a parenting class. I had to take an anger management class. I did a 90-day a um, wow. drug treatment outpatient program. I did individual counseling. Um, I did therapy, individual therapy, like, basically anything that I could take. Uh, you know what I mean? That would look good to the courts. I took it um, without them actually even telling me that they were going to give me my kids back, you know? All while living in the men's home. Yeah, yeah. S still in the home, serving <laughs> in the men's home. Uh, you know, holy warriors, Wednesday night service, Sunday service, doing everything, <laughs> you know? Uh, but, uh, yeah, only by gra God's grace. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot of stuff to do? That's a lot of stuff. What about for you, Charmise? What would you have to do? Um, so I pretty much had to do the same thing, except I had to do a six-month outpatient program. And it was kind of um, intensive. It was homework and just a lot of parenting, domestic violence, one-on-one um, -on -one counseling. Um, just this, pretty much the same thing Justin had to do, except everything that I did was a little bit longer than Justin's. And um, also I had to basically prove that I can keep my kids out of domestic violence situations that um, I could use the necessary tools that I had learned from my classes to protect them and keep them safe and you know how to at the time I was learning trying to learn how to co-parent with Justin because I wasn't necessarily sold on restoring our marriage and I just was dealing with a lot of things that I hadn't forgiven myself for and so I was trying to navigate with, you know, doing things apart. But, you know, God came in and restored that. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Justin, what did you have to forgive about, you know, yourself and for your, for your wife? What types of things did you have to forgive to bring this healing uh, in your family? Um, well, there was a lot I had to forgive. Um, but... You know, just like uh, the process for everybody, it starts with you. Um, so when I came into the home, it was just me and God. Um, you know, you go through that 30-day blackout, and all they give you basically is a Bible. You know what I mean? So, um, but God showed me that I had spent so much time being controlled by uh, my emotions, um, 
the emotion that I was most familiar with um, was anger. And he also showed me like everything that I lost, um, you know, by letting my anger control me. Um, you know, he showed me, uh, you know, my children. He showed me, you know, the, the, the condition of my marriage. Um, so I definitely had to forgive myself for, um, for, the, for the anger, for the, the outbursts of wrath, for, um, you know, letting my, my, my kids get taken by CPS again, um, you know, the, the condition of my marriage, because, um, you know, whether or not, you know, I was blaming Charmise, I did have a part to play in it. You know, I had a big, big role to play in that. So um, I had to forgive myself for all of that, you know, um, like coming into the home was the actual first time in a long time where I, I took a long look at, at my life and I really wasn't happy with it, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, just letting things get so bad, you know. What about for you, Charmise? What types of things did you have to forgive yourself for and, um, you know, for your husband? Um, well, for me, um, I feel like I, I did a lot more than Justin while we were separated. You were more wild than Justin? I, I was wow. a lot more wild than Justin. Um, our youngest daughter is the product of an affair that I had, and um, I had to learn how to forgive myself for that. And, you know... Um, There's Texas right there, Texas Rose. Yeah. I had to, um, so you know, cute. forgive myself for being unfaithful. And um, for in my mind, I just thought that's too big. He'll never forgive me for that. Like, I can't even forgive myself, you know. So I was just like, he... You know, he talks good because, you know, he was in the home and it kind of felt like, you know, how when you have a boyfriend in jail and he's talking all sweet and stuff to you, you know, so <laughs> like I, I felt like that, like he's saying that now. So, you know, when she when the baby comes, it's going to be a different story. But, you know, he was understanding and loving and you wouldn't even know, you know, I didn't know, I know. until the other day. <laughs> That's that Bible. You read that Bible it change your heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, look at that baby. Put her back. Put that baby back there. Who could not love that baby? That baby is so cute. <laughs> I don't care whose baby that is. I love that baby. <laughs> right? So, yeah, I just had to forgive myself for that and just, um, you know, being a, a bad mom. Mostly I was just uh, dealing with the unforgiveness for not protecting my kids and giving them the, a stable environment. I come from... Uh, a, a home where it wasn't ever stable. My mom was always in and out, drug use and things like that. So I felt really guilty for not wanting to give my kids better than what I was used to. So I had to deal with a lot of that. But, you know, throughout all the therapy that I got and just, you know, speaking to, you know, my leaders and um, the people that God put in my life, I, I was able to, you know, let things go and know that I'm now, you know, I'm forgiven and I've been set free from all of that. Thank you, Lord. When did you first realize that God had healed the relationship between you and your family and, and your husband? Uh, when we started to do the marriage challenge and I was actually excited about it and um, when we were doing counseling with you and just like the homework you would give us and things like that, I was starting to see like, okay, this could work. Like, I want this to work. Like, I'm happy. Like, God restored all of the bitterness and all of the, he just, you know, made it go away. And I, I was able to let it go. And so when the marriage challenge came and we were doing the homework and, you know, just listening to the different, you know, stories of the different marriages, I was just like, you know, we can, we can do this. Like, it's, it's, we can do this. Yeah. So, marriage challenge last year. So you could actually sense God healing the relationship. Yes, I could. Right. That's yeah. awesome. So forgiveness introduces the healing process. Yes. And you actually feel it and see it yes. happening. Amen. How about for you, Justin? When did you first realize that God was healing your relationship? Um, I would say right around that time also, like, okay, so they took the kids, um, but when they took the big kids, um, Texas wasn't born yet. And like Charmise said, she was, uh, you know, kind of battling with whether or not I would be able to accept Texas. Um, but I had already, like, moved past that because, like, much like right now, um, at that time in the church, uh, all we were talking about was forgiveness that was like the whole thing Pastor Marco was talking about every Wednesday was forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Um, so God was talking to me about forgiveness. Um, but like I said, when, when I knew that the, the relationship was healed, 
um, was like right around uh, when we had to give up Texas because she had the baby um, and then she had her for about a month and you know, everything was going good. Um, and then the courts told us that we had to turn her in too. And that was like really hard, you know. Um, and even though we had been through all of that stuff, me and Charmise, um, like when, when she had to like, you know, give the baby up, like she just like was broken, you know. And I just wanted to, to be there for her, you know, like to support her um, no matter what. You know, of course, you know, my big kids, they were, they were in the struggle too. But like, you know, seeing her go through that, it just kind of like awoken in me, um, you know, like, I guess uh, protective instincts, you know what I mean? And I just, I just like knew I was there for her, you know, I just wanted to be there for her. But yeah, that's when I could tell that, you know, because like no matter what, God was I was, yeah, doing I was something. There. Yeah. 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 And what about when you got your family back? You know, I know that you're together now, right? Yeah. You live all live in the same yeah. home. Yes. <laughs> that yeah. awesome. Even, even Texas Rose is yes. in the home. Yeah. She's probably, she's running the home, I bet. Yeah. yeah she does she run is. the home. Yeah, so you guys are together, I mean. Yes. How does that feel? It feels good. It, I feel happy. I feel, I feel like um, I'm still finding the balance. Everyone's still adjusting to, you know, new rules and just being together. And I feel like um, as long as we keep God first, he will, you know, make everything balance. You know, so, yeah. They just started school. I still, I'm a ministry leader now, so I'm at the church a lot. She lives um, our kitchen ministry. <laughs> yeah. So um, God's just restored everything. And now I think things are better than they ever were. How powerful. Hey, I honestly wake up every day and I still have a hard time believing it. <laughs> like, you guys really have to understand the people were telling me that I would never get my kids back. They were gonna adopt my kids out. My wife, mm -hmm. when I came to the home, I didn't know where she was at, what she was yeah. doing. And I really, honestly, I didn't even care. I was that, that far gone in my mess that I didn't even, it wasn't even a, I didn't care. Um, but now look at us today. We get to sit here on the stage in front of you guys. And uh, you know, as a testimony, a testament of what God can do, um, you know, when you have a surrendered heart, like I wake up in the morning, pastor, and I'm like, man, like I'm in my own house <laughs> with my kids again, you know, uh, it's just crazy, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> you got to pinch yourself some, sometimes. Huh? Can I touch on that too, Pastor Joe? Because they were already getting, um, they were already setting up for uh, having us to, to adopt them full time. Like they were telling us like, they're never going home, you know, and we're, we're in the process of trying to explain to the kids that, you know, um, that they weren't going home. But we, me and my wife never, we never told them that. We, they always knew that they were going home. We, we always prayed, we always, we worshiped through it. Like literal, literally, like literally we had to, that was one of the things that got us through it. Mainly. Robin, what types of things did you do with the kids in the home to help kind of ease the pain of, of being away from their parents? Um, pictures of them, um, praise and worship, church, um, activities. Um, so they're being taught about God too. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. This one right here, praise and worship all the time. I would go in the room. She has a set time for bed. And 10 o'clock at night, I'm like, told my husband, like, she's up. What are we going to do? And then I go in there because they fall asleep to worship music. And she's on her bed praising and worshiping at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. That's she, she, she will actually, we will actually have praise and worship at our house. We'd put on Facebook um, live. And she'd be touching us, laying hands on us and singing to us as we're praise and worshiping. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, we had, she had her karaoke machine and it was like. That was, her, that was her escape, and she knew that God had her. She understood that God was fighting for her, going to bat for her. Um, that's what we told her, and, and, and she believed that, and she knew every day. They both knew her, Justin. They knew, they knew that, um, that God's the only one that's going to get them out of this situation. Like, we can't wow, do anything. Wow, that's powerful. Mommy and Daddy, at, this, at, this, at the point they were at, I, it, it wasn't nothing good enough for them to do um, for, for them to be. What is that? Um, um, reunif reunified with the, with the parents. They were just like, no. The not. kids knew that eventually they'd be they, reunified. Eventually, it, you know, they were hearing. That's some great faith, right? Yeah. That childlike faith right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
move, move mountains. <laughs> Justin, what would you say to people that are experiencing abandonment, having to forgive maybe parents that abandoned them or, or um, you know, maybe they've kind of gone through what you've gone through and, and were forced to give over their, their children, you know, and are going through the process of reunification. What would you say to them? I would simply tell them to give their lives to God. Um, I can't put it any plainer than that. There was, a, there was a brother who told me when I came into the home, after I told him basically what I was going through, he said, oh man, I know what your problem is. He said, you just gotta put God first. <laughs> he said, you gotta put God first. If you love God more than everything, and I know it sounds crazy, bro, because I know you love your kids, I know you love your wife, but he said, if you put God first and you love him more than anything, God will give you everything back. And, and that's what I did. What about you, Charmise? What would you, what would you tell women who are experiencing the same types of things that you are, that, or, that, or that you did? I would say that no matter what it looks like, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what people are telling you, nothing is impossible. You serve a God that is bigger than your circumstances, bigger than the system, bigger than, you know, anything. You just got to fully surrender and, you know, just give it all to God and let God know, like, you know, no matter what, it's going to be me and you rocking without anybody. And I promise you, he will restore everything. Praise the Lord. Well, we're so proud of you. Thank you. And we're honored to be a part of uh, the reunification journey and to have you guys a part of our church and serving in ministry. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bella, well, you've been through a lot. You went through a lot. You had to be apart from your parents for a long time and live with your uncle and your auntie and and now you're back together. I mean, how do you feel, Mama? I feel really happy because Jesus showed Satan that Jesus is the boss. And, <laughs> and <laughs> Jesus is the boss. Oh, my God. Come on. You ought to clap your hands Praise right now. Jesus is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Come on. That's powerful. <laughs> awesome. Look at Now that you've gone through this journey, you've earned the anointing. Right? You can experience. You, uh, the anointing is like the muscle of God that enables you to do the work of God. And you've earned... That, that anointing. And so you're, you're going to minister and, and impact people's life that are experiencing abandonment, loss, suffering, you know, departure, all those things. And you guys are going to have a very, very powerful ministry. Aren't they? You guys know that. Very powerful ministry. Thank and it's going to bleed into your children. They're already preaching and praising like there's no tomorrow. Amen. Thank you. And so let's just give them one more clap offering. That's awesome. Let's stand to our feet right now. And we're just going to invite the worship team back up. And we're just going to take this moment and just, we're going to just do some prayer. And I want to invite folks up. Give them one more hand of, hand of applause as they leave. Listen, if you're in this room and, and you're experiencing any type of abandonment or rejection or loss, we're just going to invite you up to the altar right now just to spend the last few moments in prayer. Uh, God, God wants you to forgive uh, so that he can heal you. That's what he wants. He wants you to forgive those that, that have abandoned you, hurt you, done you wrong, and, and that way he can introduce his healing power to you. So all over this room, if, if you're in this place, go bow your head, close your eyes. We've got a few minutes. We're done, we're done a little bit early. That's fine. In this room, and, and, and you've experienced those things, it's time for you to forgive. It's time for you to be healed. Just make your way to the altar right now. If you're in this room and, and you say, Pastor Joe, I need a relationship with Jesus. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I need my life changed. 
you could work your way up here too to the altar. Just go ahead and get out of your chair and just make, your, make the journey up here. It's okay. If you're standing next to somebody, you may have to come with them. Just encourage them to come. You brought somebody, you brought a visitor. They, don't let them leave here without Jesus. Don't let them leave here without Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come on up. Receive comfort. Receive your healing. Receive what God has for your life. God's going to change it around. What the devil meant for destruction and evil, God's going to turn it into a song of praise. I love the Lord. Don't you love the Lord? Awesome. No matter how your life has been, or he's going to turn it. It's going to be awesome. You already know, huh? It's going to be awesome. Anyone else in this room, make your way up. Extend your hands towards them, those of you who are you remain in your seats. Let's pray for them. Pray with me. Say, Jesus, I'm ready to be healed. I forgive everyone who's ever hurt me. And I receive your forgiveness for my life. Remove my sins. I repent from all unforgiveness, bitterness, anger. And I receive the peace of God, the power of God, and the glory of God, the forgiveness of God for my life. And I receive Jesus as my Lord, my Savior, my God, and my King from this day forward. Heal me now by the power of your Spirit. Holy Spirit, come upon me now and help me to be free, to live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's give God one more shout of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pastor Christian, you got some final words here? Can we give a hand for Pastor Joe and the Clark family? How many really received from that story? Wasn't that awesome, the young girl? Jesus is the boss. I love that. We love you, church. If you need prayer, come forward. We're going to continue this forgiveness series on Sunday. And on Sunday, we're going to learn a little bit about the different forms that unforgiveness disguises itself as. Some of us may be dealing with unforgiveness and not even realize that we're holding on to something. We're gonna learn all about that on Sunday. All of our campuses, we're gonna be teaching about unforgiveness this upcoming Sunday. We love you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Remember, Pastor Marco is gonna be in the building this Sunday. Don't miss out to hearing all the great things that happen in Uganda. We love you, God bless you.